Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Arch Study of You. I am your host, Cameron Gilmore. Taylor Winnett absolutely laid it all out, full transparent. Can you just imagine the emotional roller coaster it was? No? Check out some of these highlights. Life when I was younger kind of made me grow up faster. Mm -hmm. Um which I think I'm very immature, if I'll be honest. Like, I I laugh. I, I babysit a lot. Like, I laugh at fart jokes. And, like, i not saying you're immature if you like these things. But, like, I play Pokemon Go. So I had to decide, am I going to quit my job to try to swim or keep working? And, you know, I'm very thankful for my husband because without him, I wouldn't have been able to make that decision. And so I quit my job going on the blocks and I like dive in and then right away, like it was the dive that caused the goggles to fill up with water. Mariah, and I kind of like damaged the discs in my lower back. So they weren't fully herniated. They were just like bulging. Mm -hmm. um, this world's not my home. Like I'm here to make it a better place, be more like Jesus. But like I have hope in his resurrection. And like after I die, you know, like I know that this is not the end all be all for me. So yes, those those clips are amazing. What's even more amazing was, well, let me have Taylor Winnett explain it in her own words. Ryan and decommit. Um, he's the coach at Loyola. I called him. I'm like, hey, like my back, it's just I can't. Um, so I had to decommit from college, and I kind of just got in this headspace, like, okay, I'm disabled. No one's gonna want to marry me. How am I gonna get pregnant one day? Like, how, am I even gonna be a mom? Cause like, I can barely function like as is. And I just thought like, I can't be a doctor. I'm not, nobody's gonna wanna marry me or find me attractive. So like, I just, one day I bought a bunch of sleeping pills and I was like, okay, like time to die. Like, I, I don't know. I cope with my trauma by like joking, but like, it's, it's not funny. If you ever feel that way, like, please get help. Um, I didn't. I kept it a secret from my family. Um, I just, it's weird. It's weird for me to think about sometimes because like if I did make that decision that day, like I wouldn't be here. Like I want to have my husband. And okay, everybody. The reason I wanted to start with this clip from the very get go, a lot, a lot of people reached out during this specific clip and it impacted so many people. Listen. It is something that it has swept through this entire, not a country, but this entire globe. It's something that a lot of us struggle with, have struggled with, or continue to struggle with. And it's absolutely no joke. Listen, mental health is, man, it's a silent killer. You can't see it. There's not a, a something that shines and goes bright and says, hey, I'm struggling mentally, like emotionally, I am going to pop. There's no, there's no signs like with an alcoholic, you can tell an alcoholic, people who are on drugs, prescription drugs, or illegal drugs, whatever it may be, you can see those signs, you can see it all over their face, their countenance, the whole nine yards. Mental health is something that you just cannot catch, you just cannot see somebody and go, oh, that person is struggling. When you listen to Taylor and you listen to her get back into that dark place, you have to almost start to just, it's its weird. It's like bugs crawling on you, right? It's just that, ooh, you just come into eebie-jeebies. And the reason I wanted to start again with this is the amount of support and the love people that showed towards Taylor um, and also to those that are struggling with it. Listen, there's always help. There's always somebody in this world that is wanting to listen. There's always somebody who is going through what you're going through. Maybe not on the same apples to apples, but in the spectrum of just trying to get right in, uh, in your brain. Unfortunately, a lot of people struggle to pass the point where they feel like this earth is no longer a place of, of safety, a place of happiness, a place of joy. And it's sad. It's really sad when people get to that space. You listen to Taylor. And she's like, she got there with all the pills and bought those pills. And she was, she was ready to go through with it. Thank goodness she didn't. Thank goodness she didn't. Because now we get to hear the story. Now we get to feel that energy and that life from her. Now we get to hear 
the positivity. It's not like she changed one day. No, it took time. It helped. She had to go through stuff. Even now she talks about it, even going through all the pain. She's still in an immense amount of pain, back pain, leg pain, can't sleep, can't walk. She has whole digestive issues that she goes through. She still struggles with pain. But what she's telling us, all of us, is she will accept all the pain that she goes through because she is still here on earth. She is still here on a mission, a mission to push forward, a mission to keep driving. And that is so, so big. That is so huge for every single one of us. Me, in particular, when I listen to this story, it's, I mean... <laughs> Look, you guys have heard me. You've heard me talk about this a lot, and I, and it's I, I feel it's super important to bring up again. When I was going through my divorce, like I went into a space where I can vividly remember it was a Friday after work, going home and laying in my bed, and my kids weren't with me. They were <clears throat> they were up with their mom, and I was laying in bed, and I remember just looking up at the ceiling and it I, the light was on i don't remember closing my eyes i don't remember any of of that at all i remember it being dark and then i remember it being light again and i literally just laid in bed staring up at the ceiling i got out of bed a few times to go to the bathroom but i didn't eat and I just laid there and I in and out of just going to sleep and waking up and going to sleep and waking up. And I remembered it was Sunday morning and I remember still laying in the same position. I still had my same work clothes on. I still just lay in there and thinking that entire weekend that the pain could all go away. The pain could easily go away. Real simple. And there was an easy way to do it. And if I went and removed myself from the pain, then I was thinking, well, if I remove myself from this pain, then time no longer has meaning because I'll be doing things and then my children will, will come when they're ready, you know, pass on and through from life. And then we'll be back and reunited. And then I will be out of that pain. My ch children will go through temporary pain, but at the end, they'll we'll all be back and we'll all be happy together. And that was my thought process, literally was my thought process. Um, all Friday and into Saturday. And then I remember what, laying still in bed on Sunday and thinking to myself, if I do not get up, if I do not move, not get up, move. If I don't move, I, I, I'm, I'm not, my body and my brain will shut down. It literally will shut down because I had no desire to get up, no drive, no ambition, nothing, nothing at all had any kind of happiness. There was none, no happiness. And I remember just thinking as I was laying there, right, I had my eyes wide open, my eyes are closed right now. And I remember saying to myself, I just need to move my pointer fingers. Let me just move those real quick. And now, look, I had gone to the bathroom, but I don't remember the last time I went to the bathroom. I don't. And I remember just thinking, I just got to move my finger, move my fingers, move my fingers. And so now I'm moving my, my, my right and my left pointer finger, and I'm just doing this little tapping motion, right? And then I'm like, okay, so let's move our middle fingers. So now I'm tapping, and then I'm like, all right, let's get them in succinct with each other. And slowly but surely, I got all my hands, and then my fingers were tall tapping and tapping on the bed. And then my wrists were moving my wrist. And then I'm like, okay. And then I remember just saying, I'm going to turn look to the left. And I remember looking to the left as I'm still tapping. And I'm looking to my left. I'm creating this motion, this energetic motion of, of movement. I got to move. And then it, eventually, obviously, I got up. I got out of bed. Um, I said, man, I, I got a shower. I remember showering. And then I just, I still was like, I'm just going to go lay down real quick. And I kept telling myself, if I lay down, I'm not going to move. I'm not getting up. I will not get up. And that's literally, I had to just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And it was, it was hard. It was really hard. I broke down multiple times from getting out of bed and going to the shower and getting out. I remember breaking down multiple, multiple times. I didn't want to go outside, but I had to eat. 
I was like, there was nothing in my house to eat, but there was, there was plenty of food in the house. Um, and I just said, you've got to go outside. I'm like, I don't want to go outside. There's nothing good out there. There's nothing at all good. And I said, well, let's just go to the car and sit in the car. So I remember sitting in the car. It was hot as all get out in the stinking car. And I'm like, I got to turn the car on. And I'm still like going through this motion, this process of I have to keep going. I have to keep moving. And it was a lot of yelling and screaming. I'm surprised nobody called, you know, paramedics or anything because I was screaming re- relatively loud and just yelling it, yelling at myself, uh, yelling out loud emotionally, just everything that was wrong with life at that point. Um, but eventually I got in my car and I remember just driving to the local gas station, the QT there, going in and getting a drink and a hot dog, which was I weird. But the drinks, if you ever had a fountain drink from QT in, in Arizona, go check it out. They're phenomenal. They're just, there's something about it. And their hot dogs were great. And I got something to eat. And then at that point, I was able to kind of just readjust my brain and be like, what am I doing? And there's so much to be grateful for. And then that night, I remember just writing as much and as everything I could in my brain. I remember writing it all out and just getting it out, penning, penning it, penning it, penning it, and penning it. Those of you that had read my book, um, I'm Not Your Sales Guru, this was not the same event. That event happened um, before this event. Um, so d- just wanted to put that out there because I had kind of a similar experience in my book. This was the second event that I had. And this time after I wrote it, I did the same thing. I went outside and I lit it on fire and burned it and watched the embers. And it, it was at that point I... I truly understood my mental breakdown I really understood the power that negativity and the and the feeling of, of just being lost no hope what that had over me it was very scary so I tell you guys this because there are thousands of examples like mine Taylor's one of them that we just something deep down inside she said you can do it you can do it you can do it and i'm telling you you can continue to do it there's plenty of help out there there are plenty of people who want to hear you and listen to you and want you to know that you are important that you are here for a specific reason and even if you don't feel like you are you are never give up never give in because this life your life matters a hundred, a hundred percent. Oof, man, it was a good one. Thank you, Taylor, for being open with us. Uh, thank you, everyone, for allowing me to open up and share that little inside of me. Uh, this last clip um, that I'm going to play, well, just listen to it and we'll come right back. My second principle is, you know, give yourself the benefit of the doubt. And I've been trying to work more on self talk and like, I read something that's like the person you listen to the most in your life is yourself, you know, your thought mm-hmm. processes. Head. So like, if I have a bad swim meet, you know, it's not going to help me if I think like, Oh, you're so dumb. Or why'd you sleep in this one day? Or why didn't you make your diet better? You know, like that's not productive. That's not going to help you be faster at your next meet. It's just going to make you feel like a load of poop, you know, like you're just, you're terrible. Mm. Um, and, you know, that helps kind of sports psychology is super interesting to me. But, um, you know, be nice to yourself. Like we all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. You know, I make a lot of mistakes all the time every day. I'm super impulsive and that's something I'm trying to work on. But, you know, like unless you're actually doing really, really bad things, you know, you're probably a good person. Like that doesn't sound super reassuring, but like. You know, in your heart, if you're doing like, what am I trying to say? You know, in your heart, what your intentions are. So like, there Mm -hmm. are things before I've tried to do something I thought was really nice and it was executed poorly. And I was like, well, I shouldn't do that again. But like, I know in my heart, it came from the right place, but I need to do it different next time. Um, But yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Come on, stop. hold on, buckle in because we're gonna have a little bit of a tangent, okay? And believe me, 
I have a lot of them, just like she says she does. So check this out. Here's somebody who started off basically as a normal a kid, right? Normal kid swimming, having a good life. Ben breaks her back, then gets diagnosed with this horrific disease, then gets classified as, hey, you can, you're disabled. And then she basically said, my dreams of swimming are, are done, goes to a very prestigious college, has a crappy time at college, right? Just who's going to want to, she, she said, who's going to want to marry me? I'm disabled. I'm, I can't, I'm over, overweight. I just, I'm standing out. I'm redheaded for crying out loud. I'm a six year old person trapped in like an 18, 19 year old body. I mean, she was at the low of lows. And then someone was smart enough to say, Hey, I've seen you swim. Why don't you go swim? And then she found that passion and love again. Then she got classified. And now she is in a U.S. record holder. Come on. She's a Paralympic athlete going to, to Paris 2024. She hasn't made it yet, but I am putting it out in the universe. That is going to happen. And the one thing, the second principle she said was what? Come on. Be kinder to ourselves. Give ourselves the benefit of the doubt. She is talking from experience. Young soul who's been through a lot. Rough childhood to rough adulthood. She never thought she'd have kids. She never thought she'd get married. Now she's married. A beautiful, beautiful marriage. Great guy. They're talking about adopting children. She may not have birth her own children, but she's going to have kids. So she's saying, listen, give yourself the benefit of doubt. So what it's not perfect. So what you're not like the next door neighbor or what we see on social media. We hear that all the time. The biggest fight that you are going to have is in between your head. She was, she said that. And I have said that all these books behind me, right? They all talk about that. Look, all that, all this, the biggest fight you're ever going to have is between your eyes and your ears. The biggest muscle we have in our body is the one that we most likely, most often neglect. So how do we, how do we shift that brain? How do we come out of that? How do we go about and understand how we can press forward? It's the, 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 the formula is simple, but we overcomplicate it. We overcomplicate it every time myself included. Why do you think I read so much? Listen to so many podcasts, listen to so many gurus because, oh, maybe this, this, no, simple. Be kinder to yourself. Find self-love. Find a way to forgive yourself and you will always, always be on the right path. You'll be always on the direction that makes you happy. Not anybody else, but you happy. Listen to Taylor. That's what that's what Taylor was saying. She found a way to make herself happy. She became a Christian. She's God fearing. That's what she does. Great. I I'm a Christian. I'm God fearing. I absolutely love it. So if you don't believe in God, okay, you believe in the universe, be in a higher power, bring believe in the, this natural space, the energetic motion, the movement, whatever it may be. But this principle is universal. This principle right here I'm about to teach you is universal. When you do an act of kindness, the universe will repay you tenfold. God will repay you tenfold. Allah, the great spirit, mother earth, whatever it is, it will repay you tenfold. That is a universal principle. You could put it to the test. You don't believe me? Put it to the test. If you're having a crappy day, go do something out of charitable. Go do something out of for charity. Go out of charity. And I'm not talking about giving somebody on the side of the street five bucks. No, I'm talking about go do something charitable. You want to get out of your head? Go do something charitable. You want to stop feeling sorry for yourself? Go do something charitable. Charity and the act of it will repay you ten full, ten times. If you don't believe me, go put it to the test. The minute that we can just love who we are, who we are becoming, and who we want others to become, we're just happy. 
You'll be happy. It's a universal truth. Go listen to this. Go listen to this interview and all the other ones that I've had. They all say the same thing. Be kinder to yourself. Love yourself more. Show more compassion. We all have great stories. Your story is just as good, if not greater, than the one we just heard. Why? Because it's your story, your life. Gosh, dang, man, this is so good. I absolutely love doing what I do. Why? Because I get to bring people on who can inspire us, who can help us think better, who can shift the direction that we go. And I will tell you this. Let me tell you this. Another point. I love when Taylor said this, right? She she ended up being great. Yet her, her parents kind of had a little, got divorced two years later. They got back together, kind of chaotic and crazy. But what happened? She turned out to be a good kid. Great kid. Which means what? Kids are resilient. 100% they're resilient. Parents, fix yourselves. Come on. And if you're with if you're with somebody who's just struggling to fix themselves, look, you can't force anybody to do something they don't want to do. All you can do is fix you. That's all you can do. Like the saying goes, you can shove water in a horse's mouth, but you cannot get it to swallow. That's that's the saying. I know you can lead a horse to water, but you can't get it to drink bull crap. You shove the water in its mouth, but can you get it to swallow? And once you do, Sometimes the horse just spits it all out. So what am I saying? Be kinder to yourself. Love yourself more. Find ways to be the best version that you can be. And this is for people who've asked me, yes, do I do coaching? 100%. Do I do mentorship? 100%. Yes. So if you want to reach out to me, 100%. But here's the deal. It's not like all sunshine and roses right? The mentors that I've had, they've been the best for me. They have been the best for me. And that's because, like the saying says, when the student is ready, the master will appear. Find a way to elevate you. Find a way to be the best version of yourself. Find a way to set measurable benchmarks, not goals. We don't set goals. We set benchmarks. Taylor even talks about it, right? She sets her goal sets, but she's really setting benchmarks. Find a way to get to those benchmarks because you will stay in what's called dopamine. Go back to Dr. Andrew Huberman, right? I'm going to have the link in here with Ed Milet and Dr. Andrew Huberman when he talked about dopamine. That you have a higher dopamine rush when you are in the pursuit of something than you do when you actually obtain it. You stay in this dopaminic, it's not a word, I just made it up, but I keep using it because it sounds really cool. You stay in this dopaminic movement towards the pursuit of something. Now, teach you another thing. Oligodendrocytes, oligodendrocytes. What are they? They are the coolest things in the world. They create myelin. What is that? Think of this, this massive current going inside your brain, this electrical current moving the oligodendrocytes coat that with myelin. Now, the more active it goes and the faster it's moving, the more information that's moving or the more energetic motion, the thicker that myelin has to get. Now, why is this important? Because that's how you stay in that dopaminic push. Your body only can handle dopamine for 90 minutes, long 90 minute period times. So the thicker that myelin or the thicker that oligodendrocyte is, the more you can stay within that dopaminic rush. And that's what I'm trying to create. And that's what I love is being in that space, being in that mindset where you're just in that motion, that motion to grow. How do you do it? Set measurable benchmarks. Go after those benchmarks. Don't beat yourself up. Love yourself. Find a way to celebrate your small victories. You getting up every morning is a massive victory. You breathing is a massive victory. It's my good friend. Uh, Craig Smith would say, make it the greatest day ever because you don't know if you have tomorrow, which is 100% true. Guys, I love you. I love all the support. I love every one of you that share, like, and comment. Please keep commenting on the podcast. Keep, please keep sharing it. Please keep sending me DMs on 
what you liked, what you would love to see more, what you would hope. And if you have somebody that has a phenomenal story, send them to me. We would love to get them on. This is the uncovering of individuals, how they got to where they are today. Thank you. This is, again, one of the fastest growing podcasts, nine countries and strong and growing. Last year, the top 25% globally shared podcast, and we're looking to do that even bigger today, tomorrow, with more and more people coming on. Thank you so, so much. Remember, share, like, comment, leave a review. It would mean so much to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do. And thank you for being you. This has been another fantastic episode of The Arch Study of You. Have a good one. I need to give a shout out to my biggest sponsor, Warrior Energy Drink. The reason why we partnered together is because we have the same mindset. We have the same drive. We're, we're for the people. We're about the people. Look, Warrior Energy Drink has zero sugar options and they got water as well. Low calories, great taste, very affordable, no crash, big energy fast high in B vitamins, awesome, awesome design, culture design, 160 milligrams of caffeine. Other energy drinks have way, way too much, and they're always giving it back to their community. They're paying it forward, partner with them. Guys, click the link below. Go go get yourself your own Warrior Energy Drink and go crush today. Hey, everybody. I want to take this quick second here. A lot of you have asked me what journal do I use, my family use. Simple, this journal right here. See, my buddy Craig Smith has spent years and years developing a journal that takes everything that's up in here and puts it on paper so we can be edified and grow. So if you don't know what to write about, which oftentimes happens, he gives you ideas. And if you want power statements, things that say, I am this, he gives you those ideas. Now, if when you look at on one page, it says, this is what I am accomplished. This is what I am statements. And there's a quote every single day that you get to write on and, and focus on. The second page is write your daily thoughts, get it out of your head, put it on paper to be the best version of yourself. The link's down below. Listen, I get no money for this. It's just, I believe in this journal. I love this journal. It's changed my life, my family's life. And if you want, it'll change your life.